Have you guys ever been hacked before? I can tell you from experience, it really stinks. But you know what? All I had to use was this little simple device and I would have been okay. But not caring about security, I was just like, eh, whatever. It's not that I didn't care, it was more so I was lazy. In today's KuCoin DigiDive, I wanna give you guys five different steps you guys can use to practice safe crypto security. And if you guys stay tuned till the end, I'll even throw you guys in a bonus one. If you guys have not already subscribed to the KuCoin YouTube channel, make sure you guys do that below and make sure you guys hit that bell notification. That way you guys are notified every time we make a new one. If you guys would like to go ahead and get started trading, links in the description below so you guys can get 20% off trading fees, baby. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over is the classic saying, not your keys, not your crypto. What does this mean? Well, what it means is if you don't own the keys, like you don't generate them, it's not your crypto. Let me give you a couple of situations where this actually stung people in the buns. As you can see here, Celsius halts withdrawals. Wow, this is awesome. Just imagine if you had all of your money on Celsius. Well, actually, your window would be closed. You are not able to withdraw your funds and they're locked up over there. This is where it comes into play of not your keys, not your crypto. To know if you have the actual keys, when you set up your cryptocurrency wallet, you will have a 12 to 24 seed phrase. It'll look something like this, which, yeah, that was my private keys. So uh, let's not show that. I'll cut that out of the video. But the point is, is I have my own keys and I own my crypto. Whereas with something like Celsius, you just have a login information and you have a wallet address. You do not own those keys. So when Celsius closed down, you can't upload those keys anywhere and get your wallet back up. If my hardware wallet breaks and it's just destroyed and gone forever, what I can do is I can upload those seed words on any wallet that I want and get my funds back. It's not that they were ever lost, it's that they're stored on the blockchain and not specifically on the device. So that's the first step, not your keys, not your crypto. And by the way, Celsius isn't the only one. Voyager Digital, they actually cut their withdrawal limit to $10,000 amid 3AC exposure. And BlockFi is also making withdrawal adjustments. Just things to keep in mind, guys. Now, you guys know where the second step's coming. It's a hardware wallet. The reason why hardware wallets are important is because on a computer screen, you just click buttons and send transactions, then you type in your password. The difference between a hardware wallet and a software wallet is your private keys are stored on this device. So if you have a wallet on your computer and you do happen to get a key logger on your computer, they're able to submit transactions without physically having the wallet or having the private keys. In order for someone to send a transaction from this hardware wallet, I have to approve it physically. Like fingers cannot jump through the screen. Hackers haven't figured out how to get their fingers physically into the space where the wallet is. It just hasn't happened yet. Maybe it'll happen soon. But the point is, is hardware wallets, in order for a transaction to actually be sent through, someone has to be over here confirming this. And again, the second part is that the private keys are stored on this device. This device has no connection to the internet. And being that it has no connection to the internet, it's not vulnerable. If you guys are ready to go ahead and take that next step into security and getting a Ledger hardware wallet, links in the description below if you guys would like to get one. The third step is using exchanges that offer tools for investors to protect their assets. What do I mean by this? Well, this can be several different things. This could be like two-factor authentication. This could be SMS. This could be Google authentication. This could be whitelist. This could be IP address block. Let me go ahead and show you what KuCoin has so you guys can see what's up. So if you guys check out KuCoin, one of the very first ones is an anti-phishing safety phrase. So you can add in a safety phrase. That way, if someone is trying to withdraw funds or send it away, you have a secret phrase that you use that must be entered in order to send the funds. This is just a additional security measure. Also, login IP restriction. If you're at a completely random address that you don't normally log into, KuCoin will go ahead and flag that and log you out of the account, which usually when hackers are going to hack in, they're going to be from a different IP address. Another feature is two-factor authentication. This could be Google authentication, this could be SMS. There are different methods that you guys can use. You can even whitelist addresses. So if it's not a normal address, then it has to be whitelisted 
and there can be no withdrawals done until it's whitelisted. So if you have a favorite address you want to send it to, when that hacker gets in and he tries to withdraw these funds, it ain't happening because, bro, you didn't whitelist. So these are just a few of the KuCoin features. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys would like to go ahead and check that out. Fourth, your network is as strong as your weakest link. Let me go ahead and show you guys a couple of examples of this. Do you guys remember the Ronin bridge hack with Axe Infinity? When over $650 million in USDC and ETH were hacked? Well, what do you think happens when someone tries to bridge funds out of that? Let's give another example of the Harmony Ones hack. This one just happened last week. This was for $100 million. This was due to a compromised multi-sig. Now, your funds are as strong as your weakest link. Let me go ahead and show you guys the effects of a bridge hack or a, just a hack in general. As you guys can see here, I'm trying to buy some one tokens on SushiSwap. This is on the Harmony One chain. As you can see here, one one token is worth over 12 cents. Now, something doesn't seem right. How much is the one token? Oh wait, it's only 0 0.022 cents. And then you look into it deeper and you're like, hmm, why is it doing this? Well, all you gotta do is go to one of the bridges and see, hmm, maybe I can bridge my funds out and get a better price. But as you can see here, trying to swap $10,000 out of Harmony to Phantom Network or any of the other chain, you can see $10,000 becomes a measly $1,500. Right now, the USDC peg on Harmony is only 15 cents. And this has to do with the fact that the funds are not there. So it's as strong as its weakest link. If there are no funds there, the funds that are bridged on Harmony are unable to be made good because the money is not there. It was hacked. There is another example of this. This is the wormhole bridge. This was hacked for $325 million. This was with Solana. These are just a few of the things you guys need to notate and understand. These chains are as strong as their weakest link. So far, the ones that have stood the test of time are Bitcoin and Ethereum. There are some other layer twos that roll up to Ethereum, but these are just things to notate. The most security in crypto as we have today is ETH and Bitcoin. Also, one of the contributing factors to the USDC peg on Harmony, being that the funds aren't there, is that in order to redeem your USDC for actual US dollars with the Circle company, it's on the Ethereum network. So the main redemption point is on Ethereum, not Harmony. And lastly, you guys want to be aware of governance attacks. I'll give you guys a bonus one at the end of this video, but what do I mean by governance attacks? As you guys can see here, the largest lending market on Solana is about to have $170 million liquidation. So what do they do? Well, what happens is all the governance token holders of the Solen token are like, hmm, you know what? This whale is about to be liquidated. We're going to go ahead and make a vote and seize the assets to prevent this liquidation. If you were that whale or that person who had that 170 million soul, it's now gone. Be careful. Understand the ramifications, especially in DeFi. There is a reason you're being paid a yield. And if you guys stayed to the end of this video, I want to go ahead and give you guys the bonus one. This is sending test transactions. Sending a test transaction is super important to do. Just like in banking, you have an account number and a routing number. If those two don't match up, the transaction won't go through. In cryptocurrency, we don't have that. You put in the wallet address, you send it, it's gone forever if it ain't the wallet address. There is no routing number to confirm that it's the correct account you're sending to. If you send the test transaction, the funds show up, then you can send the rest. If it doesn't, Nice, you just saved yourself, depending on how much you're gonna send, could be hundreds, thousands, or even millions of dollars. So to summarize this video, first, not your keys, not your crypto. If you're not holding the funds and don't hold the keys to the crypto, you technically don't have it. Second, use a hardware wallet. If you guys want to get one, there's a link in the description below where you guys can get one with Ledger. Ledger is one of my favorite wallets to use. Third, use the exchange tools that are provided. KuCoin has a list of different tools that you guys can use. I'll leave a link in the description below so you guys can read into all of them and implement them if you guys are on KuCoin. If you haven't already signed up already, the link's in the description below so you guys can sign up and get 20% off trading fees. Fourth, the network is as strong as its weakest link. 
If you are sending your funds on a network that is barely proven and that has shoddy security, well, you're as strong as your weakest link. You can consider your funds lost, like I showed you on Harmony. I'm not saying Harmony is bad, but they had poor security with the bridges. Fifth, make sure you guys are aware of governance attacks. Like you were shown on Solon, there is a chance that a governance proposal can pass and your funds are gone. Make sure you guys understand what's going on into the DeFi dApp that you're deposited into if you are deposited. And lastly, always send test transactions. There is nobody you can call to get your funds back if you send it to the wrong person. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this KuCoin digi dive. Let's go and hit you guys with a wisdom one-liner. Proverbs chapter 13, verses 14. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Make sure you guys are staying with someone wise. It's the fountain of life. If you guys enjoyed this KuCoin digi dive, make sure you guys go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. That way you guys are notified every time we make a new one. And if you guys want to check out some of our previous videos, there's one here, 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 and like that.